and welcome or welcome back to Life on the Fringe. Um, today I'm going to be responding to a video by Unnatural Vegan, um, why I never watch family vloggers, but I'm only going to be responding to the pet vlogging uh, part of her video um, as basically a lead-in to talking about hamster potential exploitation by YouTubers and TikTokers and the media and whatnot uh, as a whole, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, and where I think, what I think we are contributing and where we fall on that scale. Because we do make a lot of hamster videos. We're not purely a hamster channel, but I would say about half of our videos or a third involve our hamsters um so i'm going to be looking at this through the perspective of someone who kind of does pet vlogging and here we go I mean that there isn't potential for exploitation when it comes to sort of pet vlogging channels, channels that are focused on, you know, someone's pets. The potential that someone will take on more pets than they can realistically care for in order to be able to make more videos and make more money or to force their pets to like sit still or to perform for the camera. I mean, we just saw with the YouTuber Brooke House, whatever her name was, um, clearly this side of the internet is not immune to exploitation and cruelty. So I So on that front, yeah, I mean basically she's just doing between the difference between family vlogging and pet vlogging. Um so far, I mean we've only been on YouTube a month, but yeah, if you're if you're getting an animal because you want to have a video where you get an animal. Yeah, that's exploitative. If you already have animals, or you've already considered and weighed the options of if you can handle having the animals, I think it's fine. But it cer certainly could be exploited, exploited in the hamster community in particular. And I have seen people who like on YouTube who aren't like just hamster channels will be like I'm getting a hamster and I didn't tell my mom and then they'll go to the store and they get the hamster and they get like a tiny cage and then they bring it home and they're like they just get the starter pack cage they clearly haven't done any research it's not thought out it's purely for views I have seen that in hamster videos so that definitely exists in hamster vlogging as a whole but I think like the true like hamster vlog channels tend to be very informative rather than exploitative. But let's carry on. I do feel uncomfortable with these sorts of channels. I do think there's a possible exception and that is the hamster YouTube community, if you're familiar. Um, the, the state of small animal care, at least in this country, is pretty abysmal. Look at the shit that Petco and PetSmart sell as like habitats for these creatures, as cages for these creatures. They are just tiny and, oh God. You can find videos of people who know a lot more about small animals than I do explaining exactly why these are so horrible. My the video she just highlighted is, is Munchies, who I follow and love dearly. Uh, it's an animal rescue, small animal rescue uh, in Washington. Um, and she's also a YouTuber. I totally recommend checking out her channel. I'll link it as well below. Um, but let's continue on. Why are, why are hamsters the exception and not d different than dogs or cats or something? The point is that it's no wonder that people just have no idea how to care for them. You know, they, they put them in a little cage. They take them out every once in a while. You know, they're, they're basically like little figurines. But these guys, these hamsters, oh my god, they look like they are living the life. I don't expect there to be any sort of pressure for them them to perform, like with a dog. 
because it's a fucking hamster, you know, and I don't think anyone watching is expecting them to, to do anything other than to just walk around and get their little treats and just be cute. And there are also tons of videos like this one, you know, showing these awesome enclosures, again, kind of giving people a different perspective on these animals and that, hey, maybe a cage that's this big isn't appropriate. Now, there is still room for exploitation, you know. So this part of her video, I completely agree with. I think that a major difference between something like cats or dogs or well-known pets that people generally treat well um hamsters are the exception in the sense that there needs to be more hamster positive parenting representation uh in the youtube community in the just in the community in general because of the poor neglectful state of hamsters the level of hamster care like the average hamster care in the united states is neglect not will like it's not willful neglect but it's still neglect where the cage is too small you're relying on pet smart or pet kill employees to tell you what to get you're probably a you know buying rather than adopting because there's not many places you can adopt unless you want to go on to like craigslist or facebook marketplace which you're not even supposed to be able to sell animals on facebook marketplace but sometimes they We'll sneak some in, but I do think there needs to be examples of positive parenting online, like munchies. Um, and just hamsters, like, having good experiences that are fun and different and stimulating. Because hamsters are often treated like, maybe like not like figurines, but like fish. You know, they're in their tank, and they're doing their thing. And you can like check on them and then you walk away. But that's actually very boring for your hamsters. Like your hamsters need change. And a lot of what they need, I mean, playtime with them is important, but also just environmental stimulation, giving them new setups, changing up their cage, but not too much, uh, giving them playpen time, giving them access to new toys. Like those are all things that people aren't aware of and they're learning from these positive influencers on YouTube. And I guess the goal of my hamster videos is to show that hamsters can be a wonderful pet uh, to your life, as they have been in mine. But they are not, like, like, people will always tell me, like, that I'm spoiling my hamsters. I don't feel that way. I... I've provided more than the minimum by U.S. standards, but I still feel like, you know, if I had a bigger place, maybe I could go up to doing German standards. Like, I'm not doing anything that people shouldn't be doing already. It's just that the standard for what is acceptable hamster care is so low. You know, maybe, I don't know, I can imagine someone making a hamster perform during the day because it's more convenient for them. Obviously, hamsters are nocturnal, so that would be not really cool. Maybe buying another hamster when the previous star dies, which did happen just recently with Vanilla Ham Ham. Vanilla died and she replaced it with butterscotch. Maybe that's fine, uh, you know, assuming that she adopted and didn't actually buy one. Um, and again, you know, these hamsters do look to be well cared for and a lot more engaged than your average hamster. But I don't know, it, it, when I saw that video that like, hey, vanilla died, here's a new hamster, it made me a little bit uncomfortable. To that I have to say like, I think people grieve in different ways. And maybe to a natural vegan, like, I didn't, I didn't follow Vanilla Ham Ham's channel prior to, like, trying DIY recipes for hamsters. So I was never, like, invested in vanilla particularly. I was watching for the recipes, but I know people did watch for vanilla. Um, but... With hamsters, you, it's, not, it's not kind of like a dog. Like, the things you need for a dog or, like, a cat or, like, a cat bowl 
and a dog or, or a dog bowl and a water bowl and maybe if it's a cat like a litter box and a couple of toys <laughs> when you have a hamster at the and you're taking care of it properly you have like an expense usually an expensive like aquarium or tank or cage and you you don't want to leave that just empty <laughs> you gotta have to like sell it all and then if you wanted to wait to get another ham like then if you like say wanted to grieve for a little bit and then get another hamster like you have this empty cage <laughs> like staring at you you know and you don't want to like get rid of it because you know you want another hamster eventually I don't know. I, I feel like with this, it's hard It's hard to be judgmental of people when they lose their pets. People grieve in different ways, and maybe she'd been looking at, like, adopting, but knew she couldn't handle two hamsters, and then when Vanilla passed, it was an opportunity to take care of uh, a new hamster. You know, right now, we have three hamsters. It would be very hard for us to adopt a fourth hamster, not impossible. Um, if there was like a really neglectful situation, um, we would maybe consider it. But in our current house, we wouldn't adopt probably another hamster. But if one of our hamsters passed away, we would probably rescue another hamster because we have the ability to take care of hamsters. And there are so many neglected and abandoned hamsters that are just going to get euthanized or set free or whatever because their kids got bored of them after Christmas or whatever it may be. Another kind of negative, these videos could encourage more people to go out and to buy hamsters. I know I said adopt and that is possible, but let's be real. If you're going to get a hamster, you're probably getting one from Petco or PetSmart or wherever. You're probably buy buying one and in the process supporting these effing terrible corporations but i feel like these videos are a net positive you know how i think this is an interesting perspective i think yeah if you see that hamsters are cute and can be fun you might want a hamster but also if you're watching these channels you know how much goes into caring for a hamster and it is hard, it is hard to find like hamsters to adopt, especially in the US because there aren't many rescues, like humane societies that even carry them. Um, so I, I do agree to an extent, if you wanted that hamster like right now, you wouldn't need to go to a pet, pet store. Um, And yes, the breeders for pet stores are unethical, no doubt. Um, but actually in the hamster community, home breeding is worse sometimes because it's like people who don't know what they're doing, don't know the genetics. And then you get these litters that are like unhealthy and they all die. It happens all the time on Munchie's channel. It's really, really upsetting. Um, so sometimes like buying off Craigslist isn't necessarily better uh, because you could be supporting, you have to really look into the ad. You could be supporting like an unethical breeder on a personal level who's playing it off as like a rescue situation. So it's kind of hard to judge in, in the U.S. But I, I do think it's an interesting perspective, but I do think that if you're watching the positive influencers of hamsters, you are looking at all the responsibilities you have to take on and trying to see if you can afford having a hamster yourself and all the care that goes into having a hamster and have the time to have a hamster. Having experienced um, the way that people care for these animals firsthand, seeing such a, a drastic difference, you know, in these videos, it, it just seems like it would be a really positive thing for people to see and just the amount of care that goes into it, you know, the videos where they're making um, little cakes for them and like a little sandbox and with popsicle sticks and it obviously takes so much time. Um, I think it just, I don't know, it just it makes me feel good watching the videos. And so I 
feel like they're a good thing. So I'm going to conclude like reacting to her video here because she goes on to talk about other pets. We don't have other pets. Um, and I haven't really thought about what we would do with if we had other pets because we are looking at eventually getting a dog once we move. Um, but... I think that her perception is a little skewed of what is out there in the media for hamster viewing. So while I, while I agree that you can definitely be a hamster channel and not exploitative and be a positive influence, I actually think I have a stronger argument for positive examples of hamster care in the media because of how much negative examples there are in the media, including on YouTube. So I'm going to end it uh, here for today. And in my next video tomorrow, I'm going to show you some examples that demonstrate my points of the hamster, the good and the bad and the ugly on hamster representation on YouTube and why I think it, it's important to have positive hamster parenting examples on YouTube. I feel that even more strongly than her and why I think she is overestimating the amount of positive influencing in the hamster care community on YouTube in general. Uh, but that's it for now and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have questions about my opinions or you have a different opinion, feel free to leave them in the comments below and click subscribe to see more videos about hamsters and about the rest of my life too, uh, ding the bell button to know when they're up. Most importantly, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.